Um, you spoke about the Patriotic Act, which sounds good from your perspective. It cannot be that as a family, we've got someone in the family who's constantly going into the streets, talking rubbish about us. And asking when, for when, attack. When we go and ask, when we go and apply for jobs, when we go and take out loans, they're like, no, but someone from your home has told us that you guys are abusive, you're dead and alcoholic, there's no way. And you're saying we are going to sit and act in this house that anyone who speaks ill of our family, we we what's it called? Disown. We're gonna disown them and we're gonna publicize it. So that people are like, anytime I hear Rutendo speaking about Zimbabwe, Zimbabweans have said he's not one of us. So don't judge us based on him. No. Sounds good. It's no, 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 I'm just saying as, yeah. a, as a concept. Okay. But for some people, that's where they start speaking about limiting freedom of speech. Uh, you're not allowed to criticize North Korea. We've got a North Korean here and people are like, no, but this person was sent by the West. I'm just saying this is how you create a villain from a Western perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From a Western perspective. To be like, this patriotic act is not a legit thing to say you're speaking ill of the country. This is to throttle objective, impartial <laughs> analysis of what's happening in the country. <laughs> yeah. But in the impartial objective analysis, and this is what we want people to understand is when that person speaks out about Nangagwa and ZANU PF and the, when they speak out, does that help Zimbabweans or does it worsen the situation? And Not that's what people need to think when they, hear these things not only that the question is let's look at what happened when you've gone to speak out all along right mm -hmm. so you look at this issue where i've just created a picture for you that a bed was laid for an opposition to take over power mm -hmm. so that we reverse zimbabwe's uh, 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 uh foreign policy and we reverse zimbabwe's internal policy of taking land and restitution to blacks correct and these are all factors that now you as South Africans are all facing right now. Correct. You are now looking at, you want, some people want radical economic transformation. Some people want land back because the country is not growing, even though white people have been allowed to keep everything. And you also got foreign policy decisions like, do we partner with the Russians? Do we partner the Chinese that are the biggest traders we are having at, two, at 60 billion? Or do we traders align to, sorry. To trade between South Africa and China? So you guys are currently I trying wanna, to decide. I want to debate with you. I know they're a big trade partner. I just don't know if they've overtaken the U.S. But they, please continue. No, they overtook the, the U.S. a long time ago. Please continue. Right. People so now you guys are with me or you in the comments. So you guys are playing around with those decisions from a government perspective yeah. with people that have got diplomatic understanding, foreign policy understanding. And all of a sudden, you've got two South Africans not elected by the South African people. Boom, they go to Congress and they start making statements and decisions that South Africa needs more NGOs to put pressure on the government and you need to fund more NGOs. But yet South Africans back home are complaining that NGOs are stopping us from taking away hijacked buildings. NGOs are stopping us from chasing away illegal foreigners. And now you've got two individuals going to make decisions for government and make decisions with a foreign government. That's where you guys are beginning to understand what Zimbabwe has been dealing with. And South Africans are not happy that Reed Itlabi and Chris, Chris Maroleng, who happens to be a Zimbabwean, have gone to represent South African issues to a foreign government without authority from the South African people, without being elected by the South African people. That's what Zimbabweans have been fighting. Because we are saying, look, the opposition was given a bed to win elections mm -hmm. when Zimbabwe was sanctioned. Zimbabwe was at war. And those factors should have made the opposition win in 2000. They even won the referendum. They were able to stop the Zimbabwean people voting for a new constitution because they won the referendum. But three months later, they failed to take majority in parliament where they lost by four seats. They got 57 seats. Zanopi have got 61 seats. That's a very good performance by the opposition, an opposition that had been formed six months before. Mm -hmm. But instead of them accepting defeat, they went to the world and said, we were beaten. We were victimized. And that's not what happened because then Wasn't they wouldn't have won the... We saw photos no, 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 of the no. guy Murt. That was later. Oh. So here they were not beaten. And... Don't you guys rig elections in Zim? Hold on, hold on. Sorry, so, sorry. so here they were not beaten. They lost fairly because they won the referendum because they had a free reign to go and tell people what they wanted. Yeah. But they didn't put enough effort into making sure that this new political party gets those extra four seats. So they lost. And they lost because some people wanted the land that was being promised by ZANU PF. Yeah. Instead of accepting defeat, they go to the West and say we're beaten. The West puts more sanctions. You see? Now, but that makes sense, right? Now there is this. 
No, it from, a, from a Western perspective. If their agenda Western... is to say, we want to go back to how things were, the West would intervene. Absolutely. Okay. But they're intervening, they're intervening illegally. That's point number one. Then point number two, the opposition are lying. This is what now creates the war scenario of adversarial relationships between the ZANU-PF ruling party and the opposition. Because then the opposition are now seen as enemies of Zimbabwe, yeah. utilizing economic weapons and utilizing superpowers in Western countries, our former imperialists, to attack a sitting government and the ruling party. Mm. But now, what many people don't say is that, so we get to 2000, they get these elect sanctions, they lose, they get more sanctions to make sure that when we have presidential elections, which are being held differently from the uh, parliamentary elections, they hope that Mugabe would lose in 2000. And two. Two years later, we have presidential elections. There's now Zidera sanctions imposed on the Zimbabwean people. These Zidera sanctions stop the Zimbabwean government from getting any loans whatsoever from multilateral institutions, getting, uh, uh, um, getting debt cancellation, and getting any assistance or even technical assistance from the IMF World Bank. So they think Mugabe is going to lose. Mugabe wins again. Why? Because people want land. It's because you guys rig elections. <laughs> no, I'm people kidding. want land. So now this time, the West then say to Tabombek, we want this guy gone. So we want to invade from South Africa. Tabombek refuses. What this means is that every Zimbabwean is now well aware that when you go and report Zimbabwean issues outside Zimbabwe to the British, to the Americans, they're not only just going to listen to you, they're going to want to sanction. Mm. And after they sanction, if, they don't, if you don't take power, they're going to want to invade. This is now clear to every Zimbabwean. But people still go and do the same thing. Hence, now you see when Tabombeki refused for, Zam for, for the British to attack from South Africa, when the opposition lose another election now in 2008, they go to Zambia. They go to Zambia. And remember, in 2008, there was violence. Many people say that this violence was instigated by the government of Zimbabwe. No. The violence you saw in Zimbabwe is no different from the violence you see between politicians in South Africa, where one group of politi one group of uh, 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 supporters are looking at another group and saying, you are using economic weapons to kill me, to separate my family, to make me suffer, to kill the hospitals, so that you force me to elect your leaders. That's violence. There's, there's extreme political violence, especially in KZN, where even people within the same party kill each other for seats and people kill each other for tenders. So but that, it, that, that is a real thing. But at least you guys can see the war where they use guns versus guns. Mm. The Zimbabwean situation was one group of people was using a sophisticated group of weapons where I kill your family by starvation. Correct. I kill your family by not getting jobs. I force you to lose your wife because you can't provide for your wife because I've destroyed your job. But it's not violence per se, so Correct. people couldn't see it. But then ZANU-PF members started being politicized to understand that, no, it's a form of violence. They're killing we've you. Got, we've got you on your They're knees. You're going you. to beg. You're <laughs> you going to say beg. sorry. And so they began to use the only form of violence they knew, which is physical violence. Yeah. When they used physical violence, the physical violence was portrayed as barbarism of these guys, but they could not also show the violence that had killed 5,000 people from cholera because of the sanctions, that had killed people from suicides because of an economy that had been depressed by these smarter guys who have got a smarter form of weapons. That's what caused the violence you saw in 2000. Can I say something controversial? Yeah. Um, 